Okay, well, thank you. I'm gonna, I know this is not in presentation view, but with Zoom and sharing my screen, it's uh, giving me trouble. So um, I'll just present this way and, and um, thank you all for um, taking some time here to listen to my information on our boot camps initiative. So this is a, a, an initiative that we started at the Learning Commons at TCC in 2019. So I'll give you a little bit of the pre-COVID and then how we adjusted for uh, boot camps uh, during COVID and then what we're planning for moving forward. So <clears throat> uh, before that, I'll just give you a little bit of information about TCC, just in case you're unfamiliar. Uh, we have about 12,000 students. And um, one, one thing to note is that our average age is about 21. So a much younger population than most uh, community colleges um, across the nation and even in Florida as well. But about uh, nearly 80% of our students are seeking an AA degree so that they can transfer. And most of our students are trying to transfer to FSU or uh, FAMU. Now we'll preface this and say that this is a pre-COVID uh, picture of our team out front at the uh, Learning Commons. And you can see the uh, kind of the breakdown of our staff there. Uh, we're fortunate to have such great support to be able to have uh, both full-time uh, specialists, uh, writing and reading specialists, as well as uh, part-time tutors and academic success coaches. And that gives you a sense of the different kinds of uh, services that we provide through the Learning Commons. So to give you a sense of our space too, again, this is pre-COVID. Uh, and we have, of course, have adjusted the space. We've been back on campus since June and have been uh, providing services both uh, remotely and in person. Um, all these pictures are, uh, again, pre-COVID, just to give you an idea of our space, um, because that's an important part of uh, the way that we structured our boot camps initially was that we wanted to give students a tour of the learning commons so that they could see where to go and how to get help. And uh, for example, here's a, an image of our AMP room. We had study rooms, as they had, we had to convert all of our study rooms into office space for our staff. So uh, we don't currently have individual study rooms, but that's just one of those typical kinds of COVID challenges. Um, but that gives you an idea of, uh, of our space and what it looks like. And now we move on to the actual boot camps. Uh, this is what we know. This is not what we have our students do. But uh, I, I wanted to uh, give you a sense of the planning process. So when we when we were thinking about uh, this new initiative, new idea, we really were considering both uh, kind of the uh, the flow of the semester from the beginning uh, to. Uh, what happens uh, during the semester and then even what happens after the semester. And so we saw a great opportunity to connect with students before the semester started. And so that's key with this initiative with the boot camps is that we want to connect with students before the first day of classes. Now, of course, that uh, comes with uh, a variety of challenges. Uh, to try to reach out and connect with students before classes begin, but I'll share with you some of our different marketing uh, strategies that we've used to uh, really promote the boot camps. So the uh, purpose uh, of these sessions, uh, number one, we want to be really proactive and connect with students early. Uh, when students attend the boot camps, we want to be able to provide uh, basically tips for success in specific courses. So the boot camps are uh, specific to the courses that, that we provide, and we really focus on those high enrollment gateway courses. Um, we want to, uh, you know, give students a kind of a running head start as they move into uh, their first day of classes so that they have an idea of what to expect, uh, what their courses are going to be like and so forth. And then finally, uh, this has changed. Uh, originally in 2019, we actually walked the students through uh, with some of the images I just showed you and showed them our learning commons. We have a, our, our own building. So we uh, would show uh, the students the space and take them on a tour and, you know, just try to make them feel comfortable. Um, we pivoted uh, when, when we had to uh, go to a remote offering. And instead of a physical tour, we actually 
showed images, uh, and we've also since developed a 360 uh, virtual tour so that uh, we want students to know that the space is uh, safe and welcoming and uh, available for them. So those are the main purposes of the uh, boot camp um, sessions. Now I'll go into a little more detail uh, in terms of what actually happens within the session. So um, think of it as chapter one kind of material. Um, so you can see a breakdown of the different subjects that we offered in fall 2019. We have since offered it throughout the semester, but I'm trying to give you a fall to fall uh, comparison here. And in fall 2020, uh, we, we shifted to offering even more courses. So not just the English composition and, and the um, math courses, we also uh, started offering assistance in social sciences courses. So we would talk about, for example, uh, with ENC 1101 and 1102, it was reviewing um, how to set up a paper in Microsoft Word, MLA format, and what to expect on the first summary uh, response paper. So it was kind of that chapter one material. Some of it's a review for students, some of it is a reminder. Um, and then for math, it's you know the basic chapter one kind of reviewing uh, equations. And I'm not a math person, so I'm more of an ENC person. But uh, that's the uh, you know the the essence of what happened in the math courses. And then the writing assistance um, was for the social sciences courses. That was AMH uh, psychology. And, uh, and what we would do for those courses is uh, talk about APA citation uh, and give an example of some of the different types of assignments that they might expect in terms of writing in those classes. So that's a breakdown of uh, kind of the approach that we had with, uh, with the chapter one material. But now you're probably wondering, well, how do you actually get in touch with students before the semester starts? It's hard enough to get in touch with them during the semester. Uh, so I'm gonna share with you our different uh, marketing strategies. We've got a great team who has put together a variety of flyers that we would both post around campus and, um, and share virtually. Uh, but more important, I believe, is this comprehensive approach that we took to our um, marketing strategies. Number one at the top of the list is uh, the ability that we have to text students. So uh, we can text students directly with uh, information about not just our boot camps, but when we have test reviews, when we have workshops, when we have uh, any important information that we wanna share with students. But we do use uh, our texting platform to uh, reach out to students. And uh, it's great because we can personalize it. We can say hi and set it up so that it'll actually enter their first name. So it looks really personalized. Uh, so uh, it'll say, hi, Tom, are you interested in attending a boot camp uh, for, you know, uh, and then we can actually enter the course as well. So we've got uh, targeted text messaging and uh, we, we send that out a few days in advance. We don't wanna start sending it too early. Uh, you know, we want it to be relevant and timely. So we'll send that out a, a few days in advance and then we'll send another reminder um, uh, just before the event starts. We also have the ability to email class sections. So for example, ENC 1102 section four, we can email directly to the students in that section. So along with texting, we'll send emails to all the class sections. We use social media, traditional forms of social media that, uh, that you all are familiar with. The flyer I just showed you an example of. And then during the fall semester uh, at TCC, we have a new student convocation. So in fall 19, this of course was in person. In fall 20, it was remote. And uh, what we do uh, for that is we actually get, we get some time. We get a little plug. Uh, in fall 19, it was an opportunity I had to speak to the parents. Uh, so I encourage the parents to, uh, you know, tell their uh, students to attend the boot camps. But in fall 2020, we had a chance to speak to the entire group uh, for this remote session. I, and I encouraged uh, students to attend there. Um, and then finally, we have our, our campus 
social media portal, which is called MyTCC. So I'm gonna show you some screenshots from, um, from MyTCC and how we've used that in the past as well. So students tell us, cause we, we wanna know, you know, how did you hear about boot camps? And what we found the most is uh, the text messaging and the email um, approaches seem to be the most effective. But in terms of my TCC, we can post uh, announcements to our Learning Commons group. You can see it listed here. Every student who enrolls at TCC automatically is placed into the Learning Commons group. So uh, we have access to all of those students to be able to um, send messages. So here is an example of us using the flyer and telling the students that this is when we had the uh, spring 2020 uh, boot camp session. Uh, here's uh, one of our staff posting uh, a similar kind of uh, information. I did also want to say that uh, for some subjects, we actually will create videos uh, and send that out to students as well. Most of the boot camps are live sessions, but we do have some uh, that, that are created through videos. And uh, let's see what else here. So uh, Again, just uh, some general frequently asked questions because we'll, when we send out messaging, students want to know, um, is it required? Uh, you know, and um, do I have to attend? And how do I sign up? And we don't require any sort of RSVP. We, we say, pick the sessions that you want to attend. Uh, you can go for multiple classes if a student's taking ENC 1101 and um, college algebra, for example. You go for multiple um, classes and that, that'll be fine. So they don't have to sign up in advance uh, because we want to make it as accessible as possible for students. Um, and then this is also, we, we can set up events in my TCC. So it's like an event alert and you can see it listed there. Now on to uh, faculty partnerships. Uh, we know how valuable and how important it is for us to connect with faculty. And faculty have participated and uh, worked with us in a variety of ways. One is through actually assisting with the creation of the content uh, that's shared with students. So that's been really valuable. We, we went out and, and uh, approached faculty and said, what kind of information do you want your students to know when they walk through the door? Uh, what, what would be helpful? And so they, they have been really um, great in terms of assisting us in that process. Uh, faculty have also encouraged their students to attend uh, via uh, Canvas alerts and, and through their own emailing. Uh, and some faculty have actually helped co-facilitate some of these uh, boot camp sessions, especially for the sciences and, and some of those kinds of areas. So we've had great faculty support and look forward to continuing to expand that. Uh, Fall 2019 uh, breakdown of grades. Uh, you can see here that um, in terms of percentages uh, that much higher uh, A's and um, for A's and B's and overall success rates uh, for students who did attend the boot camp sessions. I'm gonna do a more uh, thorough comparison here by subject in a second. But what I wanted to mention is our overall numbers. So in fall 19, like I said, brand new idea, brand new initiative. We were feeling our way through the process and we were really pleased that we had over a three day period, 99 students who attended. Uh, and of those 99 students, 114 sessions total because some students attended for multiple courses. So we learned a lot during that time and we hosted it again in spring 2020. Um, and, uh, and, and then we started hosting it in express sessions as well. Uh, but uh, of course, with the pandemic that forced us all to change our practices. And what we decided to do was to go uh, completely remote uh, for the boot, we pretty much had to uh, be completely remote for the boot camps in fall 2020. We hosted it, uh, all the sessions on Zoom. We used breakout rooms for each of the courses. <clears throat> and you can see here, it was offered Thursday, Friday, and Sunday with the semester beginning on Monday. We went from 99 students in fall of 19 to 636 in fall 2020 when we pivoted to the um, uh, remote uh, virtual platform. And of those 636, 685 sessions attended. So obviously 
we were pleased with um, <clears throat> the growth uh, of, uh, that we experienced through that. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this other than to say, just take a look at the trends. Uh, you can see that students who attend um, <clears throat> boot camps are more successful compared to the overall population. You see higher uh, D, F, and W for students who don't attend, for students who do attend. You see higher levels of success, A's and B's especially. And I'll just kind of run through, you'll see that same pattern through all of these courses <clears throat> that are shared. Um, and again, even with uh, intermediate algebra, you see a higher percentage. College algebra, really excited about that. 61% of the students who attended finished with an A. Um, <clears throat> And what we've found is that connecting with students early in this proactive process really makes them, first of all, knowledgeable of who we are. Uh, you know, when you hear learning commons, you're like, well, what is learning commons? What is that? Uh, and then it gives the students a chance to freely connect with us throughout the semester. Uh, and, and we have seen that students who attend learning commons are more likely, or who attend the boot camps are more likely to attend and visit the learning commons. Here's some student feedback. Uh, thank you, it was helpful, it was great. Um, and I know I'm running a little bit low on time. So I did wanna to touch on this point too. Um, we also reach out to students who attend boot camps during the semester uh, to check on them, uh, to see how they're doing. And I love this comment here. I believe that the boot camp was very helpful. I remember we learned a little bit about peer reviewed journals in the boot camp session. And that subject came up in my psychology class and I was already called up and knew what it was. Uh, so that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of outcome that we want to have uh, with our boot camps. If you are interested in, you know, implementing something like this on your campus, I think you'd want to consider, you know, of course, the courses, uh, how to market uh, those strategies, what's the location going to be, um, and, and then any sort of staffing uh, needs. Our future plans are to consider a hybrid format in the future. We don't wanna lose that in-person face-to-face um, -face interaction, the opportunity to walk through uh, students through the learning commons. So uh, we're gonna consider a hybrid format in the future. Um, we uh, certainly may need to update some of our uh, content. Uh, we're looking at expanding courses and, of course, increasing faculty partnerships and really digging into the data in the future, too, to see if certain demographics of students are more successful when they do take advantage of these boot camp sessions and then, of course, attend the Learning Commons throughout the semester. That's my uh, contact information, and I, I think I have maybe uh, a minute and a half. Yes, yeah, so Dana had, um, she 